All right, so I have done a video that I will link in the description about our IPM we use in veg in the tent that's over there. Um, we have flies everywhere. I'm in the warehouse. This is where your order gets packed. We actually just started some compost out in our garden and it brought a bunch of flies. So now they're in the warehouse. Um, but um, we are 12 days into flower into the tent, um, close up on two weeks. That's about when we start to uh, like to change over to using predators. Up to this point, we use what is in the um, link that uh, I'll put below, uh, which are uh, Suff Oil and MP. Those are the products we use. And so this is what we just got in today. We will actually put these in the fridge because it's already at the end of the day today, and we'll apply them tomorrow. We did our last spray of Suff Oil in the tent today. We don't want to spray any more of that. It would burn pistols. Um, and so let's see uh, what we have in here, um, what we ordered. And actually, I will give a shout out. We don't sell these. I'm not making any money off of this. I'm just showing you what we are using. And so we order from Evergreen Grower Supply. I've been ordering from them for a lot of years. Uh, they treat us well. Uh, I don't get any special deal. Um, we don't make any money off of them. It's nothing. We just choose to buy stuff from them. It's a very reasonable price. We always get what we um, order. They always come alive. Um, and so we've just been dealing with them for years on a personal level and a commercial level. So let's see if we can get this out of here. I'm not patient, so we're just going to manhandle it. Okay. Okay, there we go. Um, obviously, you see that they send it with cold packs. They're still frozen, actually, so that's cool. Um, they do overnight everything. Most when you buy predators, they're going to be overnighted. It's expensive. There's no way around it. Uh, it just is what it is. So, and I have notes because I am old and my brain doesn't always function. So let's get everything out of here. There we go. Yes, there's those. All right, I got that unpacked. It took me a second because I couldn't actually find these. They were lost in there. Uh, let's put that invoice up there. So um, now that we're going into flour, um, this is what we use. I've used it in the past. I've used it commercially, and uh, we use it on a small scale, and it works. Um, it's not going to necessarily work for you. Uh, every situation is different, but this is what we use, and we've had success with it. That's why I'm sharing it with you. Again, we're not entomologists, we make soil, but here we are. So our slow, re slow release pouches, these are cucumeris, and these are for thrips control. Now, the one thing about that is um, thrips pupate in the soil. So if you are going, if you get thrips and you start spraying for thrips and you don't take care of them in the soil, you're never gonna take care of the thrips. And so um, you wanna keep that in mind. And so we also do soil borne things, um, which we'll talk about and that I basically reapply when we start to flower, and so I consider that part of our flower predator protocol. And so we have cucumeris for thrips. We have the Californicus right here, which is a predatory mite, um, and those like spider mites. And so now we have thrips and spider mites. Um, and now we have our green lacewing eggs, and these are little cards that you can tear and hang. And these eggs will slowly hatch, um, and the green lace wings like aphids, and they also will eat thrips, mealybugs, and leaf hoppers. And so really, we're looking at what? Thrips, spider mites, aphids. Now, no, not those, these. Um, now we're down to uh, stratiolalaps or um, hypoaspis miles, same thing. Um, and those will go in the soil. Now we already put them in the soil, but we reapply when we go into flower just to make sure our number's up because I don't want to have any issues. And so those are good for fungus gnats, thrips pupa, and root aphids. And then we have rove beetles, which, let's see. Whoop. Let's see if we can see them. I think you can see them? Yeah, I see them. So 
those are the Rove Beetles. Now we have already put Rove Beetles in there, but I notice our numbers have gone down a little bit and that's not abnormal. To, it takes a little bit to get them established. And so we're going to reapply those and the Rove Beetles are fungus gnats, root aphids, thrip pupa. Now something that we stock that we did not order from Evergreen is uh, Steiner Nema Feltier or SF Nematodes. And so we are also, we, we apply those once a week anyways, but we're going to keep applying those. I just wanted to have those out to let you know what we're doing. Um, and those are fungus gnats, root aphids, and thrips pupa. And so that's going to handle most everything that we could have issues with as far as pests go when we're in flower. And so our goal is at this point basically two weeks in, which will be Saturday, which uh, today is Thursday. Um, so in two days we'll be two weeks in. We don't want to spray again. We want to apply all this, flower out, be done. That being said, if we popped up with a slight mold issue oop, or something like that, um, we might do a light spray of something. I would just have to do it on a case-by-case -case basis. I'd have to see what that looks like. I don't want to make sure it doesn't spread. It hasn't been an issue yet. We haven't had to do that. But if I were to do that, I would probably use a really light application of Pure Crop 1. It uh, doesn't leave any weird taste, doesn't burn pistols at a light, like a half, uh, even a half ounce to an ounce is it. That's all you need per gallon. Um, I hate the price. I absolutely hate how much they charge. Um, but for light mold, mold issues, it works really well and there's no issues on your end product. Um, other than that, that's literally all we do. And you know, to date, we haven't had any issues doing this. Again, your situation could be different. This works well for us. We're in Oklahoma. It's worked at a commercial scale. It's worked at small scale. And uh, we can go and change as we need. Now, um, I will admit that for what we're doing, I over-order um, what I apply typically. I think we're at, so what is this? One, two, three, four, six. So we're at like 30 sachets there for eight plants in 30s. Um, this is 5,000 of those. The Californicus, so that was 30 sachets of cucumeris, 5,000 uh, Californicus. These just come in a sheet. I think these are a sheet of 20 for the lacewing eggs. And then the Stratios, that's 25,000. And then a reapplication of the Roves, that is 500. Um, and then the nematodes um, we're splitting these applications this is a 50 million application and we'll split this into about five so we'll do about 10 million a week um, and it's it's worked really well for us again we're not entomologists we make soil um, but this is what we do in our own gardens whether it's commercial um, or personal or demonstration and uh, we have really good luck with it um, if you guys have any questions about any of the stuff we're using um, I will pro I'll try to make a video of us actually applying these tomorrow um, and we can post that and uh, we can go over questions um, in the comments over that. But right now, if you have any questions over any of the products we're using, why we're using them or any success or failures we've had or you've had and you want to talk about them, put them in the comments. We can talk about them. Um, and as always, if you're not subscribed to us and you found this beneficial, please subscribe to us. If you're not following us on Instagram, follow us on Instagram. Um, if you want to see me act stupid on TikTok, come over there and see me act stupid on TikTok. Um, and uh, I uh, hope some of this information helps you out and uh, it uh, benefits your garden.